Hey everybody, welcome to a Cricut tutorial. Now before we get started, make sure you click the subscribe button and also make sure you click on that bell icon because that will let you know anytime I post a new video. Today's video, we are going to make the unicorn ornament and we're gonna do this on the cubed ornament that I showed you right at the beginning of this video and that was our finished product. So we're going to show you guys how to put in your unicorn lashes because that's really the only vinyl you're going to need unless you want to do a personalized name on it. So we're going to go ahead and click upload and upload the image. Now I already found the unicorn lashes that I want to use and I saved those into my Cricut folder and they're right here. Now these are just a JPEG so all we have to do is clean them up. So we're just going to click simple and all we have to do is click away the gray. Go ahead and click continue and save it as a cut image, which is on your right hand side and click save. Now you wanna make sure that you know the size of your ornament. Now I just like to measure mine too, even though like your box will tell you that it's 2.36 inches or whatever size it is that you're using and you can do these with round ones as well. Um, I like to measure mine by myself because the actual measurement that I have is about two inches across. Um, so we wanna make sure that our eyelashes are probably only going to be about one and a half inches. They're going to be very, very small because this is a pretty small ornament. So I measured mine with just a regular ruler and I'm just going to size them down. doesn't have to be exact, but I think that's pretty good and that should be a pretty decent size. The beauty with these are these are great to use when you have little pieces of vinyl scrap, which I, that's why I always keep my vinyl scrap because if you have a little tiny piece of black, this is perfect. You could also make these with like a silver or a holographic or whatever kind you want, but because of the type of um, glitter that I put on this, I wanna use black because I really want them to stand out. So let's go ahead and click make it. This one's super easy, super simple. We don't have to do any kind of special settings. We don't have to move anything on our mat. So let's go ahead and click continue. I'm gonna turn my machine on and we'll get it cut out and weeded and then I'll show you guys how to apply this. So I've gone ahead and weeded off my little lashes. You can see they're super easy. It took me just a minute. And I've cleaned my ornament with some alcohol. It's just rubbing alcohol. And all we're going to do is figure out where we want to place our lashes on our ornament. And you can just eyeball it. They don't have to be perfect. Just like people, all unicorns are different. And you're just going to press those on. You may need to use a little bit more pressure than just your finger. It just depends on your bulb. This is a plastic bulb. So it may be a little bit different than sticking it to a glass bulb. But here we go. We're just going to peel off our transfer tape and we have our lashes. The next thing we're going to do is create our unicorn horn and our unicorn ears. We're ready to make the horn for our unicorn. So all I did was I have this um, Primo Sculpty Clay. And this one is blue glitter, and then the silver one is called white white gold. It's really just, it's silvery. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but this is the Primo that we're using. Um, I picked it up at the local AC Moore. This is a bake clay, so we are going to bake it. But all I'm doing, and I'm sorry my dog's going to bark at God knows what, all I do is I break one brick off, and you can see they're kind of sectioned into four pieces. So I take one brick... And I don't know how well you guys can see, but it is glittery. It's really cute. Um, and all I'm going to do is warm it up in my hands and kind of roll it like you would do with dough. And you can see that it already starts to form pretty good shape. I do always try to keep the tip together. For whatever reason, it doesn't always like to stay real smooth. And just move it around on your hand a little bit and warm it up. And then you can do it on your table. Um, don't do this on your nice wood tables. Don't uh, do this on like unprotected furniture. This obviously is just a craft table tool, or, uh, so I don't care if it gets all messy. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, so all we're going to do is get this nice and thin, and I think i got to make that silver a little bit thinner. What I do is I'll usually look at it against my ornament and just see like if it looks kind of fat, because I think that's going to be really fat, because we're going to combine them both. So all I'm going to do is just shape these down just a little bit thinner because we're going to combine them and we're going to roll them around each other. And you'll see here in just a second, we're just going to thin those out. We're not going to use the whole big thing because this would be way, way too long. So all we're going to do, pull the dog hair out of that one, I'm going to lay them next to each other 
and all I'm going to do is press them together a little bit and all we're going to do is just twist. And as you're twisting, you're just going to press them together a bit. You don't have to press super hard. You don't want to flatten out your horn, but you do want to make sure that they are adhering to each other. And we can always take them apart right now if we want to thin it out a little bit more because it does feel a little bit big for this unicorn. So all I do, like I said, all I do is I just sort of hold it up and see if it looks really big. And actually I think that's pretty good, but I'm going to thin it out just a little bit more just so it's just a little thinner because I think I want a bigger, um, I'm not quite so fat horn on that one. It's kind of a small ornament, it's not huge, so again, it's kind of all personal preference on this part, but it is going to be um, just kind of based on the size of your ornament and how tall and twisty you want your horn. I wanted a little more twist in the color, I was only getting about one twist out of this, so that's why I wanted to go thinner, is if I do it thinner, and again, just press the tops together, and then just twist. If I go a little bit thinner, I can get more twist in it before I have to cut the bottom off in order to make it the horn. So you can see, doing it this way, I get way more twists. And again, all I did was just kind of pressed it together. And I just got to figure out how tall I want my horn, which actually I think that's pretty darn close to where I want it. So I'm just going to twist it one more little time here. And all I do is, and I actually just use, if I can find it, I'll usually just use scissors. You could use a knife, um, all sorts of things, and I'll just cut it off at the bottom. And then I just sort of make sure that it's all pressed together. And then at the bottom, because this part is going to be um, glued to your ornament, you're just going to press it flat. And I totally just pressed my nail into it. And just make sure it's twisted. And you can just kind of twist it with your fingers a little bit as you're holding it. And what we'll do is we'll go put it on a piece of wax paper or parchment paper. We'll probably use parchment paper because I have that right on my hands. And we'll go put it in the oven. And let me double check so I make sure I give you guys the right directions on this. Ah, I lost them. Uh, you're going to put it in your oven at 275 degrees for 30 minutes, and that's per quarter inch. So we're at about 2 inches, but it's pretty thin. So we can probably only have to bake this for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to go get this in the oven. And while that's doing that, I'm going to show you guys how to do the ears. So all I did was just went on Google and I looked up some ears and I just uploaded them to our design space. They're going to be white and pink. So I'm just going to leave one set black and the other set pink. And we can actually detach them if we want to or slice because see how much space is between them we can actually save a little bit of paper and I want to show you guys how to do that because sometimes you're gonna to need to do that if you want to save paper because we don't need these spaced the way they are so I want to show you guys how to slice all you do is get a shape it can be any shape but I'm just gonna use a square and you're gonna put it over whatever item you want to slice now remember you can only slice two items so while the ears look like they're two separate pieces they are one piece in your layers panel so go ahead and put the item over what you want to slice. You're going to select your ears, hold control on your keyboard, and click on the square, and then click slice. It's going to give you several pieces. It's going to give you this big black box, which we don't need anymore, this gray ear, which we don't need anymore, and now our pink ear is separate from our other pink ear. And this is going to make it cut so it cuts closer. And you could do this with the little black ears too. So I'll show you again, and this time I'll use a circle. So all we're going to do is put a circle over one ear. Make sure it's only covering the one ear. Select the ears. Whoops. And you can actually select them two different ways. So you can do the controls. Or you can draw a box around them by holding down your left mouse button and drawing a box. And all you're going to do is click slice. This time you'll end up with a gray ear, a circle, and your other black ear. Now you could attach them if you wanted to, but Design Space will automatically put them close together when we go to click Make It. And it's going to put them on two separate color mats because they're two separate color pieces. So let's go ahead and click Make It. And it's going to do our black ears, in this case white first, and then it'll do our pink ears. And you can see they're much closer together. So it's going to save us a little bit of our cardstock. Again, these projects are great for scraps. I do not have any scrap white or pink cardstock right now, which I know is kind of surprising. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut them 
on a regular piece. I'm using an eight and a half by 11. Um, I think you guys pretty much know how to cut cardstock. I'm gonna just use my light grip mat. I set it to light cardstock and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out. When we're done here, I'll show you guys how to put them on your unicorn. I have my ears with the cardstock. So all we have to do now is glue them together. All I'm gonna use is just a little glue stick pen by Elmer's Glue. They're very small, so you don't need a lot of glue. You don't really need to be too, you know, crazy with them. It's just cardstock. So you're just going to put a little bit of Elmer's glue on the back of your pink. And don't worry, this is not how we're attaching them to our ornament. They will be attached with hot glue. But first we have to glue on the pink. And don't worry, these don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get these exactly even. They don't have to be the same. As you can see, I just dropped mine. I'm just going to move them. Nobody will notice if they're not 100% perfect. And I think that's part of the charm of a unicorn. They don't have to be exactly the same or exactly perfect. So let's go ahead and finish this part. We're just going to put a little glue on this one. We'll want to let these dry for just a minute or two before we actually glue them to the ornament because you don't want them to fall apart when you're holding them. And you don't want to accidentally slide your little pink part of your ear and mess up your unicorn ears. So let's go ahead and just get this one pressed on. And there, our little unicorn ears are done. They're ready to be glued on in just a minute once it dries. We're ready to glue on our little ears. Some people will glue onto the cardstock. I actually prefer to glue on to the ornament just because the cardstock is kind of thin and I don't like to burn my fingers. So all we're gonna do is just put a little line of glue and you can put it anywhere you want. And I just kind of eyeball where I want my horn or my ears to sit. And don't worry because we're going to cover up the glue with other embellishments. So I'm just going to hold it there for just a moment. We're just going to let that glue harden up a little bit. And then we'll just do the same thing to the other side. And you just try to line it up about in that same general area. So we're just going to take our hot melt glue. I'm going to look at it from the top. This looks about even. Nobody will notice if it's not 100% even, so don't worry too much about it. So we'll just stick our other ear on. And we'll just do the exact same thing. We're just going to hold the ear in place until that glue hardens up a bit. The nice thing with hot melt glue is it hardens up pretty quickly or at least gets a good enough hold that you can let go of stuff pretty quickly. I'm going to hold on to that ear just a little bit more. It's trying to tip backwards a tidbit. So we'll just hold on to this one just a little bit longer. Um, if you use felt, you can, you'll do pretty much the same thing. I just prefer the cardstock look because it's just a little bit thinner. All right, those look like they're pretty adhered. So this is what we have so far. It's pretty darn cute, if I do say so myself. We're just, we got about five more minutes on the clay baking in the oven. And once that's done, we can put the horn on, and then we're going to go ahead and make some embellishments to put around the horn and to hide some of the little hot milk glue on the ears. So we're now ready to connect the horn to our unicorn. And it's just going to go right here on the front, and it is going to sit kind of like at an angle. I don't know how you guys can see that. But same thing, all we're going to do is just take the glue gun, and put some glue where we're going to put our horn. I will say I let the horn cool for probably about five minutes after taking it out of the oven. And again, don't worry too much about the glue that might be sticking out of the sides here. I think I'm going to twist this just a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to twist it to a side that I like. I like that side. And um, we're going to hide that glue. We're going to put some gems and stuff around to make him have like kind of a pretty crown. So this is what we have so far. I don't know how you guys can see this. But there's the hot milk glue. I don't know. So I dropped my camera like and it doesn't like to focus now. I think I have to buy a new one, which makes me sad. Um I will say that I can see where I put my nail into the clay and I'm not real happy about that, but it's fine accidents happen but this is what we have so far for our unicorn so we'll let this hot milk glue dry and then we'll go get some gems and we're gonna cover the top of this with gems i'm gonna use these little silver diamondy plastic gems that i found 
A lot of stuff that I have, I just find it randomly in all my craft stuff. And so all I'm really going to do is just kind of lay them out. No particular order. I'm just going to use a little small dab of the hot melt glue on the back of the gem. And then all I'm going to do is just find a spot and place the gem. There's really no rhyme or reason to where you're going to place your gems if you decide to do them. You don't have to. This is just an extra little step if you want to do it. If not, you can have just the horn and the ears. I just decided to gem it up a little. Um, but you can just use kind of whatever you want. I got down also like a bag of like these little plasticky ones, but I didn't think these were quite, whoops, quite the look I was going for with this unicorn. So I decided to go with these little, and I burned my finger, these little um, rhinestones, which I think you can get pretty cheap at really any craft store. Try not to touch your fingers with your hot melt glue, which I just did about 16 times just now. And I just put hot milk glue right on my finger. That's the only downfall, the hot milk glue. It's evil, and it will hurt. And I did not put that gem at all where I hadn't intended to because I dropped it. So, mistakes happen. We'll move on from it. The hardest part with this, really, honestly, are these tiny, tiny gems. A, I drop them all the time. And B, is getting the hot milk glue on them without getting it on yourself. And then... Translating the hot milk glued gem over to your ornament without screwing too much up. So I'm going to start, I'm going to finish placing these and I'll show you guys when I'm all done. I've placed all my gems. You can see them all up there on the top. Again, sorry about the focusing. It's, I have to buy a new one. But our unicorn ornament is all finished. I think it came out really, really cute. This was a super easy craft, super inexpensive, really fun to do with your kids. And these make wonderful gifts for little girls, even adults who love unicorns, because really, who doesn't love a unicorn? If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer your questions for you. If you're looking for a tutorial for anything, also let me know that down in the comments below. I will more than happy make you a tutorial. I make these things because you guys request them. I'm also curious as to what you guys are making for Christmas. Let me know because uh, it's coming sooner than we would like to admit. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time and hit the bell icon. That'll let you know when I post a new video. I hope you guys have a great day.